in the last story, we began working on Project E by crafting up the energy condenser, Mark 1 and Mark 2, and then finally upgrading both of those to the transmutation table, and finally, the transmutation tablet to allow us now to quickly and easily convert any item that has an EMC value into any other item, and more importantly, it means going forward, if there are ever any fiddly crafts that do have an EMC value, for example, this sapphire here, we can make one of them, throw it into the transmutation table, and going forward, we don't have to keep doing the fiddly craft over and over and over again, we only have to do it once. Speaking of fiddly crafts, that is kind of the plan for today. This sapphire is really the big bottleneck between us and progression, because it is needed in order to get into the power mod. The power mod is needed in order to get the watch of flowing time. And then down here, you can also see that the sapphire is also required if we want to progress forward to the tier five blood altar. So in order to get the sapphire, we need to put a sapphire dust into a multi-servo press. And you'll see the sapphire itself doesn't have that high of an EMC value. So once we have one, we can really get as many of these as we like, but the Sapphire Dust here has to be made using these create items, the deployers and the presses. We have to do this 15 times using Kepu ingots, I'll bookmark those, and Pyroot ingots, and we have to get a Sapphire Essence. The Sapphire Essence isn't too bad. This requires a Ruby Essence, which we have made before, along with Molten Enderium, Molten Enderium we get, you guessed it, by melting Enderium, and Enderium isn't too difficult for us to make, it's just a Signalum ingot, which we have made before, with a thousand millibuckets of Molten Lapis, which we get by just melting Lapis. So, the Sapphire Essence isn't too difficult, however, if we want to get these two ingots up here, and don't forget we need to get 15 of each of them, we need to get, for the Kepu ingot, two iron, eight corrosive additive, 96 lithic powder and 256 bioluminescent goo. That's a lot of bioluminescent goo, but it should be fine. It should be doable. We can get it with shroom lights. We've been getting those passively from our botany pot over here to the point now where we have got just over a stack of them. I actually thought we'd have more, but I think the drawers have filled up. The reason they filled up is that I have not put void upgrades into those drawers. And so as soon as they fill up on one item, they then stop producing all items, which is not ideal. But uh, hopefully with void upgrades there, we should start to see more of the shroom lights being made. Also between streams, I did go ahead and uh, move a lot more of the mob drops out of my colossal chest into these storage drawers to give us just a bit more space, like I said I would do at the end of the last episode. But the Kepo ingot, isn't too bad. I think this should be fairly doable. The corrosive additive here requires the organic compound. We made this previously. This time it requires bile and withering ooze. The withering ooze is the reason why I said it's good that we got these wither roses in the last episode because you get quite a bit of withering ooze from every wither rose. So I don't think that's going to be too bad. And then the lithic powder also seems kind of fine. We can get it from sand. We can get it from different raw ores. We can get it from glowstone. There's quite a few things that produce it. Just regular dirt, regular flint. And so I don't think getting 96 of that is going to be a problem. The tricky bit for us is this pyroot ingot. Because the pyroot ingot is made over in the mixer with a saturated tau and a nether goober ingot. And it's the goober ingot here that's going to be our problem because it requires netherite scrap. And netherite scrap requires quite the uh, the process to get. Specifically, if we want to get netherite scrap, we first have to make ancient debris. Ancient debris is a block of hepatizen with some molten obsidian in the fluid encapsulator. Once we have that, we then need to make this crystal resonator. And this is where things get tricky for us because in order to craft the crystal resonator inside of the Hellfire Forge, we need a gem that has 1,200 will inside of it. And we need to spend 100 will in order to make this. So up until now, we've only ever done recipes inside of the Hellfire Forge that require one demon will. And to that end, it's been pretty easy for us to do those crafts. So a lot of the recipes require either zero will or at most one will. And so we've managed so far to avoid doing this section of the quest line up here. And so we have to start today by getting Tartaric Gems. And the unfortunate fact is that we're going to have to go all the way through to the biggest Tartaric Gem if we want to get this Resonator to get the Netherite Scrap to get the Sapphire to progress forward. So essentially, the way this works, these Tartaric Gems are capable of holding large amounts of will. 
Right now, we do have one demonic will in here. This has a will quality of 4.09. And so if we were to get our first Tartaric gem, which is this guy, the Petty Tartaric gem, thankfully it's fairly easy to make. It's one gold, one redstone, one lapis, and one glaze. This does require one will. And so we are gonna have to use the one that we have here. But other than that, we should have everything we need. We'll take gold, we will take redstone, we'll take glass, and we'll take lapis. As per usual, in here, one, two, three, and four, with our one demon will, should get us one petty Tartaric gem. And this is able to hold up to 64 will. You'll see this one here is full in JEI, and it says will quality 64. Um, I don't want to do another one. Actually, I do want to do another one, so it's good that we did that there. And you'll see that the demon will here is now at a quality of two. Basically, going forward, whenever we would pick up a demon will, instead of picking it up, it should just go directly into our Tartaric. Gem. And so here you'll see that this Tartaric gem now has a will quality of 2.09. And essentially what we have to do now is go through a bit of a rigmarole to get up to this uh, greater Tartaric gem. Because the petty Tartaric gem has a maximum will capacity of 64. We then move up to the lesser, that can hold 256. Then the common, which can hold 1024. And then the greater, that can hold 4096. And the reason we need the greater is that again, if we go back to this recipe right here for the resonator, you'll see that whilst the recipe only uses 100 will, you have to have at least 1,200 will to start the craft. And there's only one Tartaric gem that can hold over 1,200 will, and that's the greater Tartaric gem. The common just can't hold enough will to make it happen. And so we need to get ourselves a greater Tartaric gem, and then we need to fill that greater Tartaric gem with 1,200 will to then spend 100 of that will making the crystal resonator. So, up until now, we've been doing it the somewhat convoluted way. We've been making the soul snares, throwing them at random mobs, killing those mobs to get a will, and then using that will for crafting. We could keep doing that, but it would be incredibly tedious to try and get 1,200 soul snares to attack 1,200 mobs and then get 1,200 will. That would be not ideal. And so that is where the sentient sword comes into play. The sentient sword gets demonic wills without using snares. That's a pretty good start. However, the sentient sword is not particularly strong. You'll see it only has an attack damage of one with an attack speed of four, which is not particularly great. Thankfully, what we can do is we can use the Petty Tartaric Gem here as a modifier on a Tinker's tool to give it the Sentience modifier, which then essentially allows the tool to do the same thing. So we can make a very powerful Tinker's tool that is then able to act as a sentient sword and get us demonic will without having to use that sentient sword, which is ideal because the sentient sword is just not particularly strong. So to make a Tinker's sword, we need a couple of components. I'm gonna go with a standard sword. I don't think we need any of the um, different swords that Tinker's offers. If we want to make a standard sword, we are going to need the uh, tool station, which right now we don't have, right? We've only got the, uh, the part builder. Thankfully, the uh, tool station it might be called the tinker station actually it is this guy right here is uh, three blank patterns those are easy enough and we might have some no we don't that'd be too easy uh, thankfully we can make them even though our system seems to think that we don't have the uh, required items and then again i'm not quite sure why that's not shift clicking in but if i do the craft manually like this and like this that totally works we get a, a tinker station and with the tinker station we should now be able to make a tinker sword the tinker sword requires a small blade and two tool handles. So in order to get those, just like we did before, we need to make casts for the smeltery, and we have to decide what material we're going to make our sword out of. There's a bunch of different options available to us, uh, and in fact, I didn't realize we already have the uh, small blade cast ready to go. We do just need to get the, uh, the small tool rod cast as well. And so if we just quickly smelt up a gold ingot in our smeltery there, we should be able over here to get another small cobblestone tool handle. And then of course we can pull the molten gold over that tool handle to get a, a small tool handle cast. Now I've done a bit of looking through JEI between episodes to try and find a, um, a good material to make our sword out of. And I think that I am gonna go with the all the modium sword here. So all the modium is a pretty expensive resource, but it's pretty good in that the sword here has a base attack damage of 80, meaning that it's basically going to be able to kill almost any mob that comes from our mob farm straight away. Because my plan here is to put like a hole in the floor. I think I'm gonna temporarily 
get rid of the mob masher. Funnel all of our mobs here down into one block, and then we can just hit them with a sentient sword or a sword that's been upgraded with the sentient modifier over and over and over again to hopefully get a large amount of demonic will very quickly. The only downside to the Aldermodium Sword is that the Aldermodium Sword has a negative 90% speed bonus. Now, thankfully, from my testing, that's only to movement speed, it's not to attack speed. And so given that we're gonna basically funnel all of our mobs to one spot anyway, and we don't have to actually move to attack them, we can just stand in one place and just keep swinging, I think that's gonna be fine. And I think that the 80 attack damage is worth the negative 90% speed buff. There are more powerful swords, but we can't make any of them just yet. There are other alloys from the Aldermodium mod, but none of them are craftable at this current stage. Whereas Aldermodium is actually pretty easy to make. You just take aluminum ingot and you polish it with sandpaper. Sandpaper we should have, we do indeed, and lumium we can get an infinite amount of thanks to the fact that we now have a lumium block for lumium essence. And so if we do something like this, we get all the modium, and then we can just smelt that in our smeltery until we have enough all the modium to get ourselves a small blade and two small tool rods, which I don't think is gonna be that much all the modium. And thankfully the blazing molten copper here is hot enough to actually melt this all the modium. Regular lava here wouldn't work. You need something that can get above 1,500 degrees Celsius. Thankfully, the molten blazing copper is good enough. And so over here, we get one tool rod. We get a second tool rod. By the way, you don't have to make all of these out of all the modium. It's probably actually more efficient to make the uh, tool rods out of something else. But for the time being, uh, in the interest of speed, if we just do this, we can get a small blade as well. And that should be everything for a pretty powerful all the modium sword. Back over here, we click sword, we put both of these in, boom, boom, and the blade, and we get ourselves a, uh, a very slow <laughs> moving sword. We go real slow, but again, the attack speed is still pretty good. And given that all we have to do is just stand here and do this, and each one of these attacks does 80 damage, I think we're gonna be just fine. And as soon as it's not in your hand, you go back to normal speed as well. So just carrying it is not really too much of a problem. And so, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna to have to get ourselves a, a Tinker's Anvil, which is one of these guys. For that, we need the Tinker Station, or not the Tinker Station, actually, it's cheaper without the Tinker Station, interestingly. We need uh, four seared brick, and then we need four blocks of some kind of alloy. I do see Lumium at the bottom on the list there, though, and so I think what we can probably do pretty quickly here is if we just grab a ton of Lumium Essence, I think it's probably gonna be fastest. If we do something like this, like this, and... Like this, we need three blocks of Lumium, and then those three blocks of Lumium should be usable to make the Anvil. Again, still not quite sure why that's not shift-clicking in, but so long as we have the seared bricks, which we've done, that could quite well be the issue, but uh, if I do this, and then we type in seared brick, we can get a stack of those very quickly, and then once again, let's try that, boom, and boom, that gets us a Tinker's Anvil, and the Tinker's Anvil here is uh, what is going to allow us to upgrade this tool. So, for example, if I throw my all the modium sword in the middle here, we can then put our unused Tartaric gem in like so, and it is going to use the one and only ability slot that we have here, but it's going to give us the sentience modifier. And so now I'm pretty sure that if we kill a mob with that honors, that we should get will for our petty Tartaric gems. And so, real quick, let me break this mob masher and let me build a funnel kind of underneath the mob masher here and i think what we'll do is we'll build a little bit of a platform down on the lower level of the base underneath the mob farm to allow us to uh, to just kill the mobs as they come down and hopefully use that to uh, fill up our tartaric gem somewhat quickly now real quick the twitch chat does actually make a good point here in that we do now have what it takes to make the swift wolf's rending Gale. This is a ring from Project E that allows us creative flight, and it's not too difficult to make. We need one iron bend, which is a bucket of lava surrounded by iron. We need four feathers, and we need four dark matter. The thing holding us back up until now has been the dark matter, because to make dark matter, we need air tenalis fuel, and the air tenalis fuel requires the philosopher's stone. Thankfully, it's pretty easy to make. All we do, we take the Philosopher's Stone, we craft it with four coal. That gets us alchemical coal, and uh, we might as well do this as we're going here to make sure we can make more of these very easily. We then do the same again with four 
of the alchemical coal that gets us Mobius fuel. Again, we'll throw the Mobius fuel in here. And then you guessed it, we do the same thing again with the Mobius fuel to get the Eternalis fuel. This is a shapeless craft, by the way. You can put these four anywhere that you like. And once we have the Eternalis fuel, we can then take a bunch of that Eternalis fuel out of our transmutation template. And the idea here is that we can craft that with a block of diamonds to get dark matter. And if we can get four dark matter, we should be able to make the Swift Wolf's rending. Gale. Now, another nifty thing that the Twitch chat told me to do between streams is place the energy condenser right next to our energy collector here because this pink energy collector generates EMC passively. It generates 640 EMC per second. And if you have an energy condenser down next to it, as you'll see here, I'm not putting any items into this condenser, but it is slowly but surely producing emeralds for us. And in the time that we've had this running, we've produced over 2 million EMC worth of emeralds that we can now just throw into our transmutation table and then use to get the Eternalis fuel here. And of course, if we do something like this and like this, we can get our first Dark Matter. And if we put the Dark Matter in like so, we can put the Eternalis fuel back in as well. And we should have everything we need to get four Dark Matter for the ring. Now, the only thing that we're missing is a bucket of lava, which is surprisingly maybe the trickiest part here, but actually, never mind. We have fire essence, which I did not think we did, but if we go ahead and do something like this and like this, we get a bucket of lava, and I think that's everything for the Swift Wolf's Rending Gale. The feathers should be in here, if I'm not mistaken. They are indeed, and then the bucket of lava should be placeable uh, in just as soon as, of course, as we make our Iron Band. Let me do this and then this, and then... The Swift Wolves Rending Gale does require EMC in order to work. Uh, thankfully, it can go into our ring slot, so let's put it down here. But I'm fairly certain that if we have Eternalis fuel in our inventory, really any fuel will work, but Eternalis fuel is kind of the best fuel we can use. If I do this, we can get some blocks of Eternalis fuel. So long as those are in our inventory, we should be able to fly. It is going to passively eat through those, but I think that's fine. It does keep, kind of leave us in a bit of a, a precarious situation in that if we do fully run out of fuel, we will fall to the ground and die, but I think we should be fine. We'll just keep an eye on it for the time being and we should be good. Okay, so not too long later and using our new creative flight, I have gone ahead and built a little bit of a chute here with a tinted glass and dark oak and I've kind of extended out this worn stone path here. It didn't need to be worn stone path, but I figured we'd continue with our current kind of base design theme. And essentially now my plan is gonna to be to get rid of the mob masher here. And then also to kind of create a bit of, hello my friend, uh, a bit of a hole in the ground. It is gonna waste a couple of our dreadful dirt, but the dreadful dirt does have an EMC. And I think we can get a lot more of it very quickly if we want. So if we do that, I'm hopeful that we can then use our, all the modium sword here to get some will by killing these guys. And again, I'm kind of hopeful that we can do that just by standing still. We, oh yeah, no, I do want to move a bit closer. But you'll see that we kill them basically instantly because of how powerful our sword is. And the only trouble that we're gonna run into here is um, picking those wills up. Now, there are a couple of options here. There is a magnetic modifier for tinkers that could be quite useful. Hitting things attracts nearby items. That's probably not too bad, actually. If we want to make that happen, it's just a compass onto the tool, which I think is maybe fine. If I take this and we head over to here, can I do this and this? I can. That's going to take one of our upgrade slots, not one of our modifier slots. And that's going to give us magnetic one. I don't think, let me uh, see about getting another compass here. I don't know if adding another one takes away another upgrade. It does, that would get us magnetic two. Let me try magnetic one, we'll see how good that is. And then we can always upgrade to magnetic two if needs be. But uh, down here, look at that, it actually pulled everything in for us. And you'll see we're already at, uh, at 15 will there, which is, is fantastic. What we could maybe do actually, is we could maybe do with temporarily, if I put my Tartaric gem away, just like in the system, because I do want to get an actual demon will. And I'm thinking what we can do is over here, if we show the area of our absorption hopper right now, it's not gonna pick up the items down here. If we set this to like negative four on the offset, I was gonna say five, but four is as far as it goes. This should now be able to pick up items down there. I was wondering if I could kind of blacklist the Tartaric gems. 
That doesn't seem possible, but what we could probably do is get another one of these advanced item collectors. And uh, the easiest way for us to do that is, of course, going to be via our transmutation table. Let's take you. We'll put you back down here. But then if we put the second one over here like that, and let me turn off the range on this guy, turn on the range on this guy. And then if we make the range on this bigger, specifically, we want the uh, Y direction to be bigger like that. That's now able to pick up all the items down here. This one has the benefit though of allowing us to blacklist the demon will. And so I think in theory now, if we grab our Tartaric gem back, I'm hopeful that we can kind of kill these mobs and have everything that's not a demon will get sent up to our normal mob drop collection chest, but have all the demon wills go to us for the Tartaric gem. That doesn't seem to be working. A lot of the, uh, the demon will is making its way out there. Give me a second. Did that, that set the blacklist. Oh, maybe um, ignore MBT actually is what we need. I think if we ignore MBT, that should work. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so with the, um, with it set to match MBT, it would only pick up will that had the exact same will quality. And of course, all of these have different will qualities, which is to be expected. But so now that we've turned match MBT off, we actually do get all of the demon will. And of course we can hit pretty quickly with this sword here. And so now it's just a case of getting this pretty Tartaric gem full. And of course, anytime we want, we could always drop these demon will. And uh, when you pick them up, we'll go straight back in to the Tartaric gem, which is perfect. And now that we're at 64, now that we filled it, we can look at upgrading it to the next tier. It does also appear that our uh, hole might not be quite big enough given some of these uh, rather large slimes. We could, um, we could do something janky and kind of have the mob masher up on the wall. Essentially what I was thinking is if we kind of, um, if we put, this is very janky, but if we put like redstone here and then if we put the mob masher sideways against the wall like this, it's kind of hard to do with the mobs there. Let me try and uh, clear these guys real quick. But I'm hopeful that if we do this, we could put the sharpness upgrades back in and basically any mob that's too big to fall down should just kind of jump like the slimes were there and should find themselves dying on that, uh, that mob masher. It might give us fewer mobs in general, but I think for the most part, only the mobs that won't fall down should get killed by that mob masher. Again, slightly janky, but for the time being, should do the, uh, do the trick. Anyway, Tartaric gem. If we want the next tier here, we need a minimum of 60 will, inside of our Tartaric Gem. We also need to spend 20. We need one block of redstone. We need one block of lapis and we need one diamond. And most importantly, I guess, we also need another petty Tartaric Gem, which means we're going to need another lapis, another redstone, another glass, which we have. And was it gold, I believe? One gold ingot? We'll find out if I do this, 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 and this with our current Tartaric Gem over here, that should get us a second Tartaric Gem. And then I believe that we then want to put in the block of lapis, the block of redstone, a single diamond and Tartaric gem like this. Yeah, so you do need one Tartaric gem here. Um, I'm being told by the Twitch chat we might not need it. This one might not get used. No, it totally does get used. So you do want to make sure you make a second Tartaric gem. Uh, if you put this one here, I think it will work, like the craft will happen, but you don't get to keep the uh, stuff that's in here. Not that that necessarily matters, I don't think, because... We now can't get this into here, I don't think. Although, I could be crazy. But yeah, I think this works. I think in with the add-on mod that we have, the add-on mod that allows you to upgrade a Tinker's Tool also allows you to empty your Tartaric Gems into the drain. And then from there, you can kind of move these to the bottom. And I think if I right-click with the new Tartaric Gem, I do fill this back. I'm being told by the Twitch chat, though, that this is unnecessary. If I had just placed the Tartaric Gem in like this, apparently the new one that we make will keep the old will quality. So... I guess either way works, but you can also use the smell tree if you need to. Anyway, back down here, I think that we can, uh, wow, look at that, just a ton of slimes getting killed all at once. You'll see the amount of demon wills that are being produced every single time that we kill here because there were just so many mobs being spawned. And I think, thankfully, with this setup, it shouldn't take us too long to get up to the greater Tartaric gem. The next one on the list is common. This requires a minimum of 240 will. Right now, we've got 171.41, a very specific amount of, uh, of will here, but I don't think it's going to take as long at all to get up to the right amount. And then of course, once we do, we can just grab these items here, 
the diamond, the block of gold, and the imbued slate, craft it with our current tartaric gem, and then upgrade to common. And then we'll do the same thing, of course, again, after to upgrade to greater. All right, boom and boom. So this time we have our lesser tartaric gem. It's full. I'm attempting it the other way around. And yeah, it totally works. You'll see this one here has a will quality of 206. And so it still does keep all of the old will inside of it. And yeah, now we just can do the uh, same thing again, kill some more mobs and try and get the greater Tartaric gem, which is a lot more expensive. It requires another one of these weak blood shards, which uh, should be easy enough. I think we can get more sanctuary to tell. And it also requires a will crystal. And it looks like we can get the will crystal from demon will inside of the arc furnace. We just need the uh, sanguine reverter, which we already have. And so if I just do this, I think that's going to get us the crystal that we need. It is, yeah. And so once we fill this up, we really just need to get another one of the tier four slates and another blood crystal. And at that point, we should have enough to make the greater tartaric gem. And then we can fill that up to hopefully get us the netherite scrap. Okay, so not too long later, and I did just plant some more tau over here. I once again reactivated the sigil of the green grove. I can now deactivate that because we did manage to get some more saturated tail. We, of course, need that saturated tail over in here to get another one of these weak blood shards. And that weak blood shard is, of course, required over in here, along with the demonic slate, the demon will crystal, and our common tartaric gem with over 1,000 will in order for us to get the final tier of tartaric gem, which we're now going to go ahead and fill up with at least... 1,200 will. Thankfully, we don't have to do that much more. It's already at 924, and we only need 1,200 for the uh, the quest that we're after. And so really, given how many mobs are down here, it's probably only gonna take a few more hits of our sword to get to 1,200, at which point we now finally have what we need in order to go back to the well quest line and hopefully make this resonator. So let's bookmark that. And in fact, let's just see if we can't make it, right? So I'll put the Tartaric Gem over on the right. And then we need one Copper, one Stone, and another Demon Will Crystal. That is completely fine. Again, we can put the Demon Will in here to get our Demon Will Crystal. The Stone, we have in abundance, and I have put that in the Transmutation Tablet now, so we can get more for free in the future. And Copper is also super easy for us to get. And before I forget, might as well do this as well, just to be safe. Boom, boom, and boom. And that should get us the crystal resonator, which we can use inside of the uh, ARC, the alchemical reaction chamber. Again, just in place of the sanguine reverter. Fantastic. And now we just need to get the ancient debris. So for that, we need that block of hepatizen and we need molten obsidian. The molten obsidian, I guess we're doing inside of the smeltery. That should be fine. Lava again should be pretty easy for us to get. Do we have any hepatizen? We do. And... <laughs> Although it is makeable in the induction smelter, and it's not that difficult, I do think it's still probably in our best interest to just do something like this and kind of keep doubling up our hepatizen just because of how easy it is to get more refined radiance going forward. That gets us to nine. I am going to do one more here just so we have one spare for the future. That gets us the block that we need. And then we just need lava and water inside of our smeltery to make obsidian. So I do wonder if there's a better way for us to make lava that's not just using the fire essence we can mix these items with the volcanic amulet inside of the mixer and i don't think i would assume that the volcanic amulet isn't used there oh people are saying to just melt obsidian that also might work actually no you are totally right that makes a, a lot more sense than what i was trying to do in that case let's take the obsidian how much do we get per obsidian inside the smeltery we get one bucket's worth perfect all right in that case never mind let's do one of these in here I'm hoping we have enough Molten Blazing Copper to melt that, although I have a feeling that 50 millibuckets might not be enough. Also, the Twitch chat is very right here in that uh, what we can do is we can do this, and then we can just EMC that lava bucket. So going forward, if we need more lava, we can just take more buckets out of here. That uh, is definitely the way to go. Over in here, we have one bucket worth of obsidian. And so if we just grab an empty bucket, we should be able to just pull that out, I think like that and then over in our fluid encapsulator we can put the obsidian in and we can put our block of hepatizen in like so and that should be the ancient debris which unfortunately doesn't have an emc value however i do believe that netherite scrap does and so it really depends on how much ancient debris we need here as to whether or not this is going to be okay so we're going to take our ancient debris and we're going to run it through the arc with in this case explosive powder 
which should be fine. Two gunpowder and one cold dust. Cold dust. We can get a macerating coal, so we can't do that just yet. However, we can do two coal and one flint with a blood orb. So let me get two coal and one flint. And over in here, if we do two of these and one of these with our blood orb, that should get us the powder. And then that gets us three ancient debris fragments. We can then use those ancient debris fragments to get ancient debris gravel. That's where we need that uh, resonator. And then... We use the ancient debris gravel to get the netherite scrap sand, and then the netherite scrap sand can be turned into netherite scrap. Okay, perfect. So this is good. We'll take this, and if we want to get the explosive powder, we just need two gunpowder, which should be very doable. We've got 3,000 gunpowder. Fantastic. Back over in here, two gunpowder and one coal sand. Fantastic. That's going to get us the explosive cell. And then back over in here, we're going to take out our sanguine reverter. We're going to put in our ancient debris, along with our explosive powder here, which does have 64 uses, that is perfect. And I think we're basically good to go here. Once we have the ancient debris fragments, we're gonna take those out, we can put them straight back in, this time though with our resonator, that's gonna get us the ancient debris gravel, like we said before. The only thing we don't have now is this, we need the advanced cutting fluid in order to turn the ancient debris gravel into netherite scrap sand. And so let me quickly dump some stuff back into our system. And again, there was a quest for this back over here. We have to go through all three of these here. We have to start with the basic cutting fluid, upgrade to the intermediate cutting fluid, and then the advanced, because the advanced requires the intermediate and the intermediate requires the basic. So to make the basic cutting fluid, we need plant oil. That seems very doable. It's two wheat, which we have, along with one bone meal, which we should also have. We do. Nice. Back in here, two wheat and one bone meal. That's going to get us the, uh, the plant oil. To upgrade it, we need either a water sigil or an uncraftable potion. I, um, I'd be surprised if we have what it takes to make the uncraftable potion, so I have a feeling we're going to need one redstone, one gunpowder, one of the coal sands that we just made, a sugar, and then a water sigil. The water sigil shouldn't be too bad. We should already have arcane ashes. We do indeed. And if we want to use that to make a water sigil, we need water reagent, which is two buckets of water and sugar. Sugar, we have. Water, we also have. We'll take both of those over in here. We'll take out our plant oil. We'll put in the sugar and the two water. That is going to complete almost instantly. Uh, then we just need one blank solid, which we do have. And just like before, we're going to right-click onto the ground with the arcane ashes. As soon as the water reagent is done, we right-click with that. We right-click with the blank slate. That's going to get us the water sigil. While that does its thing, let's get one redstone. Let's get one gunpowder. Let's get one sugar. And what was the last item required for the basic cutting powder? Of course, it was the, uh, the coal sand, which we have. Perfect. So in here, we'll throw in the sigil, the sugar, the gunpowder, the redstone, and the coal sand. And unless I have missed something, which it appears I have, we need, oh, of course, the plant oil. Perfect. Once that's done, we should be on our way to upgrading to the next tier for intermediate. The water sigil doesn't get used, which is good. We need gunpowder, glowstone, sugar. That's all easy enough. Gunpowder, glowstone, and sugar. And then we need a different kind of sand. We can leave that in here. We'll go gunpowder, glowstone, sugar. Uh, we'll put the basic cutting fluid back in. We need to get sulfur dust or sulfur sand. So, oh, we can put netherrack in with the explosive powder. That is completely fine. And don't have any netherrack in there, although I do believe that I did teach my transmutation tablet how to get netherrack. We did. Fantastic. And so over in here, we will uh, take that out. We'll put our explosive powder back in, this time with the netherrack. That should get us what we need. And if we really wanted to, we could do a quick one of these to make it just that little bit faster. And then back in here, we can throw that in. That's going to be everything for the intermediate cutting fluid. And then if we want the advanced cutting fluid here, we need the greater tartaric gem, which I think might get used. I'm actually not too sure, but I think it might. We also need some stuff. We need the water sigil. We need sulfur, salt pizza, glow berries. Oh, I see. That's just glowstone and sweet berries. Sweet berries, I don't think we have. Oh, we can wash town fruit. I see. Okay. Let's take the town fruit. Over here, we're not in washing mode, but that can be rectified very quickly with a bucket of water. One and two. We wash that town fruit, that's gonna get sweet berries. We can then, of course, craft it with a single piece 
of Glowstone. Like so. Once we have the Glowberries, we can, of course, EMC those for future use. And then back over here, do we now have what it takes for that next tier of Cutting Fluid? Oh, interesting. It also doesn't use all of the previous tier Cutting Fluid because they have a set number of uses. That is good to know. So we need the Greater Tartaric Gem, which apparently is used here. And so, unfortunately, there's no EMC on this. It's annoying because it means we kind of just have to um, use the one we have. But that's fine. We can always make another one should we need it going forward. And then what else do we need? We need the Sulfur again, which is just more netherrack inside of our arc. Boom. And then finally, we can put in our Glowberries. The last thing that we need here is just the uh, the Saltpeter, right? And the Saltpeter here is two plant oil plus one coal sand. That should be fine. However, it does mean that we are going to have to uh, take all the stuff out of the table here. Let me quickly teach wheat because we're going to need that going forward. And then uh, we can also potentially do the same with uh, bone meal here. Again, we've got a ton of bones, but just to be safe, we'll put that in for the future. Take these out. We need one, two, three, four with one, two. That should get us to plant oil. I'm not sure if we can speed this up, but we totally can. Fantastic. And then two plant oil plus one of the coal sands here should get us the saltpeter and then finally with that saltpeter along with the tartaric gem the intermediate cutting fluid the sulfur and the glowberries along with the final item which is of course the water sigil that should be the advanced cutting fluid finally now if we put the advanced cutting fluid back in we need to use that to produce our netherite scrap of course this time over in the uh, the arc so let's do this and this again let's give it a quick tap to make it faster, that gets us netherite scrap sand, and that netherite scrap sand is usable going forward. Does it really need to be a full advanced cutting fluid for this to work? Like, this doesn't work anymore now that I have one netherite scrap? That is unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Either way, um, now that we have one of these, we can just smelt one of these into netherite scrap, and then we'll have infinite netherite scrap. We can obviously duplicate it with refined radiance, but it's uh, it's also just EMCable, which is uh, is good. I'm just checking. There's no slightly more efficient way of doing this. I don't think that there is. And so really, it should just be a case of throwing this over into a furnace. I thought my furnace was still over here, but I actually picked it up in the last episode. And so let's do this and this with some kind of fuel. And finally, that should be netherite scrap taken care of. Twitch chat is right here, actually, in that my repair talisman did repair the cutting fluid, which is good. It means we can kind of put this back in and, uh, and get another one so you can kind of keep repairing that if, uh, if needs be. Again, not that it really matters too much because we can do this and then really take out as many as we like. Over here, we have managed to get another stack and a half of emeralds from our collector, and so that gets us another 1.6 million EMC. And, of course, if we want to make netherite here, we just need netherite scrap and gold. So let's do some netherite scrap i take a, a stack but i only need four right because we can just duplicate once we have done this and this that gets us one netherite we put that one netherite in like so we then take out nine netherite in order to make a block of the stuff like this and then as soon as we have that block of the stuff that was a mistake my friend goodbye and goodbye once we have a block of the stuff we can add it to our wall of blocks and we should just be able to use our scythe to get really as much more netherite as we like. So let me, I, I do want to keep that Eternalis fuel, but let me get rid of everything else in my inventory here because we do not need to be holding any of this stuff right now. If we take this and we shift right click here, we're going to get a ton of netherite essence. And the good news here is that we can just craft this netherite essence into netherite and the netherite is pretty high on EMC. So if we do this and this, that gets us 2 million EMC just from that little bit of clicking that we did. Boom. And so going forward, I don't think that, uh, that EMC is going to be too difficult for us to come by. We could definitely also look at uh, using our deployer to do this automatically, to kind of collect all of the, uh, the netherite essence by putting the scythe into the hand of the deployer and then setting up some kind of system to uh, automatically craft all of that netherite essence into netherite ingots. And then, of course, we could just send that around or manually place it into our uh, EMC network to allow us to get infinite free EMC. Not that infinite free EMC was particularly hard for us to get anywhere because of course we do already have the collector over here and people have rightly pointed out that the collector does have an EMC value in and of itself. And so one thing you can also do is kind of put this in here and then craft a few more of these 
And so long as they touch the energy condenser, they will provide EMC to that energy condenser. And so we could, for example, put down one at the bottom, like this, one at the back, like that. And so long as we have access to the front here, we are going to get even more EMC even quicker. This is coming in a lot faster than it was now because we have more collectors providing EMC to this energy collector. And this is only the Mark V. You can go even higher with the energy collector tiers, going all the way up to Mark 16, which produces a trillion EMC a second, a staggering amount of EMC, but uh, it's also very expensive to make. But yeah, for the most part, we now have just a ton of EMC available to us, which is going to make it a lot easier for us to progress forward. Speaking of progressing forward, let's see about getting this Sapphire. Before we do that, one thing we could try and rectify is our current Enderman problem. Um, I guess we can probably put the uh, the Mob Masher back now, to be fair. And you know what? Let me do that real quick. Let me go and fix the, uh, the Mob Mashing farm. Okay, so now that the Mob Farm is back up and running, we have lost a little bit of efficiency, of course, because we have a few fewer Cursed Earth blocks available to us. But that's fine. We can always get more in the future should we need it. But for now, let's see if we can't work our way towards this Sapphire. So the first step, as we saw earlier requires signalum which we thankfully do have and thankfully can emc along with a bucket of molten lapis so we'll throw the signalum in here hold on let me check if i got that right oh it's done inside the create mixer i think oh no it is done inside the blast chiller interesting okay sure we'll throw this in here and then we need to get the bucket of molten lapis which again is going to be easiest done via throwing 10 lapis into our smeltery. At this point in time, we are probably going to run out of fuel in the smeltery, but thankfully, Lapis doesn't require that high of a heat to melt. And so, for the time being, we can get away with using just regular lava. In the future, if we want to smelt something like the uh, Old Amodium again, we would have to go with a higher temperature fluid like the Molten Blazing Copper, but for now, the Lapis will smelt with lava just fine. And given that we only need to smelt Lapis at the moment, that's not going to be a problem for us. So, as soon as this is done, We'll move it down to the bottom. Fantastic. We'll pull that out. Boom. And we'll go throw it into the blast chiller. And of course, given that we have three and a half hours, uh, given that we have almost four hours of time inside of our pouch, we'll make that just a little bit faster. And of course, we'll give that a tap inside of our transmutation tablet. So now, to transform that into sapphire essence, we need a ruby essence. Do I have a spare ruby essence? I do. And so all we need to do is melt this down, which I'm hopeful now that I just mentioned it doesn't require more than a thousand. It does require more than a thousand. Okay, so we need to get another bucket of molten blazing copper, which thankfully was not very difficult. I believe it was just coal and copper inside of here with fuel given to this guy. So unfortunately, the seared tank here does retain its inventory when you pick it up. However, the people have pointed out in the Twitch chat that if we uh, burn it in the transmutation table here and then just get another one, this one comes back empty, and then we can put our newly acquired uh, bucket of molten blazing copper back in there, and that should hopefully melt down our enderium into probably not a bucket's worth, if I were to guess. Yeah, only 90 millibuckets worth, and so we are going to have to grab another 10 enderium. Thankfully, we've got a ton of EMC, and these are not too expensive. Let's do one of those. And again, you get the idea at this point. Once that is melted, we can take the Nidirium. We can put it into our spout over here, which is currently full of water. Does this retain its inventory when broken? I don't think that it does. It doesn't. And so if we just get rid of this and then do this again, like so, we can take that rug with a rose away and we can hopefully just grab the... Oh, we're missing one ingot of enderium i thought we had enough but i guess i uh, i only put 10 ingots in and not 11 that's fine let's do one more like that uh, we can take that and of course pull it over the ruby essence as per usual you can't put a bucket straight into the spout and so if we put the bucket into here that should get us a sapphire essence and i'm hopeful that we kind of only need one of those we do thankfully we just have to run this through this process 15 times to get sapphire dust and so we need two produce this and then if we want the actual sapphire that seems kind of fine actually so let's have a look do we have what it takes to make these two ingots that we bookmarked right at the start of the episode so the pirut ingot was just an a saturated towel which we do have along with this nether gooba ingot this is why we needed the netherite scrap which we do now have we also need a nether gooba glob which is made in the hellfire forge with a netherite 
a nether wart, a high covalence dust, and a netherite scrap sand. That seems fine. Do we have a netherite scrap sand over here? We do. And so let's put that in there, along with just a regular netherite, which we, of course, don't have. I should get into the habit of taking out more than a stack at a time here. Uh, we'll put one in here. We'll put the rest back into our system. Another wart we do have. I'll take one of those, make sure we teach it to the template, and drop it in here. And then what was the final item that we needed here for the nether gobber globet? We needed the high covalence dust, of course. High covalence dust we do have. Let's drop that in here. And then I assume that we only need like one will, if any, to make that happen. We do. Nice. Thankfully, this has an EMC value. And so if we want more of these nether gobber globets, we can just go ahead and craft them like that. And then we can do something like this. Take one of these. This thing also has an EMC value. Fantastic. And so now, what are we missing? We're missing two gobber ingots. And these require diamonds, gold, iron, and a gobber glob, which is a gobber globet. And that is a polished rose quartz, a coal, a medium, and a diamond. I think that's actually. Completely fine. Polished rose quartz, we have. Uh, gold, we have. Diamond, we have. And then was it a coal? It was, but it was also medium covalence dust, which is what I was forgetting there. Medium covalence dust we do have. And uh, as per usual, we should teach that along with the other covalence dusts. And so you, 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 and you get us the gobber part for the gobber ingot. We take this, we do this, we then take a ton of these craft them into this, and then we craft this. Let me just do one of these real quick, just in case we need more of them. And then we do this, right? Perfect. Okay, and thankfully this has an EMC value. So now we have that ingot. We can then take that ingot and hopefully craft it into this ingot. We totally can. We just need the one netherite scrap, which we do have. Perfect. Let's try that one more time here. I would like one of these. Boom. And we'll throw it, of course, into here just to have more of them should we need it. And then in order to actually make the ingot, annoyingly, we need to superheat our blaze burner. So up until now, we've had recipes that don't require the blaze burner, and we've had recipes that just require fuel in the blaze burner. But if you want to superheat the blaze burner, we need to get a blaze cake, this guy right here. And unfortunately, this looks like a bit of a pain to make. Um, real quick, I assume that the Kepu ingot doesn't require it because the Kepu ingot just requires the, uh, the Bioforge. So in terms of the blaze cake here, this requires a Wither Skeleton Skull, which we've made before. This should be fairly easy with the custom recipe. We then need a couple other items. The blaze head requires that we, uh, we kill a blaze, which might be tricky, although I do see that there is a recipe to spawn a blaze because we do also need a blaze egg here to make this work. So I assume we could spawn a blaze inside of our uh, mob farm and then we should get a, a mob head at least in the first seven blazes from that with our beheading upgrades. The blaze spawn egg doesn't seem too difficult to make. We should have some regular eggs from our chickens earlier. And of course we can EMC even more of those should we need them. Other than that, we need volatile fluid and we need genetic compounds. So the volatile fluid we can get from magma creams. Magma creams should be fine. We have blaze powder and of course we can EMC more blaze powder. We also have slime and so if we do this, and this, we can get a magma cream. Let's do this and this to get a stack of magma creams. And then if we go and throw those into our decomposer, that should, especially with the help of the temporal pouch here, get us a bunch of what we need, the uh, volatile fluid. It also has the side effect of getting us more bioluminescent goo as well, which is actually very useful because we do need that for the, uh, the Kepu ingot. So that is good. How much um, volatile fluid? 32. We then also do need to get 16 of this genetic compound, which is 16 organic compound. We've made this before with hormone secretion, which we can get from a gas tier or from bone marrow. Now, bone marrow, I'm fairly certain we've got a decent amount of. We do. We got 140. It's not a ton, but I'm hopeful that it's enough to make this uh, to make this happen. So there is more than enough volatile fluid. Let's do the bone marrow, and again, let's do like a 16x speed increase on that to make it hopefully reasonably fast. That looks completely fine. We only need 16 hormone secretion. And we've got a ton of it in there now, which is perfect. And then nutrients we can, of course, just get from our nutrient paste. And bio we just get from the, uh, the bile glands, which we also have a ton of. And so I think at this point, it's mostly just stuff that we've done before. Okay, so it turns out that we might not actually have to make the blaze cake here. The blaze cake looks like a bit of a pain to make. 
and it looks like we might be able to get around it if we use bioethanol from the create crafts and additions mod we are going to need a straw and for that we need a rolling mill i feel like we made a rolling mill earlier in the series we did and so if we put that down somewhere we can uh, temporarily lower the speed of our setup here to hopefully get it back online and then if we put a single piece of bamboo into the rolling machine that should get us i think i might have to go to the top actually like this that should get us the straw it did and then i believe we can right click that straw onto the blaze burner so now it's a blaze burner with a straw which is good and then all we need to do is make this bioethanol which we can make in the mixer with sugar cinder flour and biomass sugar we have cinder flour is just netherrack through the crushing wheel so let's do a quick one of these to get a bunch of cinder flour and then the biomass is a mixture of seed oil and really any kind of living item uh, cactus bamboo kelp vine lily pads etc and the seed oil is just seeds kind of crushed under the metal press so over here if we replace this depot with a basin which we can do if we have any andesite alloy whatsoever which of course we don't but we can do one of these take one of these and i'm pretty sure that should be the last time we ever have to do that because that does have an emc value and so now we can do this to get our basin let's put that basin over here and if we get any kind of seed does a regular seed work here it totally does if we throw that in that gets us 100 miller buckets so two three four five six seven eight nine that should get us one bucket of seed oil and that should be enough actually so let me get my bucket ready we will take that bucket of seed oil out and apparently i uh miscalculated there that's fine we'll do one more boom and then if we put that in here which apparently you can do that's fine i don't know if it would let me put both in at the same time but it does now we just need to mix that with like cactus or i guess bamboo is probably the easier way for us to do it because we've got so much bamboo let's drop just a bamboo in there maybe a couple of bamboo it's also possible we might want to um also it might need to be heated it does need to be heated that is completely fine we've got coal let's do this just a regular heat this time that should make us our biomass it does and then we just need two biomass i guess we want to make a bucket's worth of this ideally so that we can kind of pull it out and so i think we're going to want to get like 16 biomass here which should be completely fine let me just kind of drop in the rest of the bamboo here and uh, i'm also fairly certain that using the pouch you can maybe speed this up a little bit to make it just that little bit faster and there goes all our seed oil we might need more seed oil but let me go ahead and get the uh, cinder flour we'll throw that in we're making a bit of a mess in here but if we do this and we get the sugar and we throw that in as well that should hopefully start making the bioethanol ideally we want a bucket of the stuff but yeah for that we're going to need a little bit more in the way of seed oil which again pretty straightforward especially if you uh, speed this up if you try and go too fast with the speed by the way there it, uh, it does mess up but if we do this and this that's hopefully going to use more of our bamboo and of course we'll take even more of that drop it in there we can always emc more should we need it and that should hopefully get us to a bucket of bioethanol which in theory we can then just place into the blaze burner before i do that i am going to uh, probably empty out this entire basin here because this basin is um currently atrocious there's far too much stuff hanging around inside of this uh, basin currently but we are on the cusp of what we need here what am i missing i take all this out the bamboo with the seed oil should get us more biomass right seed oil of course chat i need heat and once we have a bucket of bioethanol we can take that out that's going to start making more bioethanol but i'm just going to take everything out for now and uh and i'm also going to go ahead and quickly break and replace this just to empty it out so now in theory i think we do have what it takes to make this ingot right the other ingot doesn't need the superheater so i'm not too worried about um, about that this is made over in the um the bio lab so all we need to do is get our one nether gobber ingot and our one saturated tail and we should be good to go we can always make more of this in the future if i put you and you in here and then i right click the bucket onto this guy that turns him into a superheated blaze burner and we get our ingot perfect so we do need 15 of those but again we can duplicate that with the refined radiance which is perfect so now going back to the kepu ingot for that we need two iron 
We need 256 bioluminescent goo. How are we doing on bioluminescent goo? We got 143 already, thanks to the work we've done today. And I'm fairly certain that if I just do a quick one of these and a quick one of these, that we should get a bunch of uh, bioluminescent goo very quickly and uh, hopefully in a not insignificant amount of time we should get up to the 256 required in fact i think we're basically already there and so after that is taken care of what else do i need i should just bookmark this recipe here real quick i need 96 of this lithic powder this again was pretty straightforward uh, sand would work here so would glowstone. Glowstone's only one, though. One to two, one to two. It looks like gravel is surprisingly good with three to six. Uh, we did just teach gravel to our transmutation tablet, and so if I take a few stacks of those and kind of throw them in here, again, we'll speed that up. We do still have uh, over three hours inside of here, and so getting 96 lithic powder is actually surprisingly easy. We're going to get way more than that, and we don't even need the rest of this gravel. And then it's just the corrosive additive at that point. So if we're going to make eight, we need eight nutrients and eight bile. For eight bile, I do need to process. Actually, never mind. I got a ton of bile. And then what was the other thing I needed? I needed nutrients, of course. We do have uh, nutrients available to us, and we can also take more from here. Just craft those down like so. Perfect. And then this is combined up inside of the bio lamp. So the bio lamp's here. Let's do you and you. And we do need the vials from before. These do have an EMC, um, although we don't need this many of them, actually. We only need eight. And so if I do this and this, that should get us the organic compound. And then we need to upgrade that organic compound with the withering ooze and the bile. So the bile we still have, the withering ooze, as we saw, we can get from our wither rose. We throw you in there. We can put all this lithic powder away for now um i do believe that i taught the wither rose to my transmutation tablet i did indeed and so again if we do this and this we can get the withering ooze and in our case we actually only need like eight of it perfect so let's do withering ooze plus bile plus organic compound plus temporal pouch and boom we got eight corrosive addition so now we need to go back i believe to the bio lab let me just quickly check that though uh, the bioforge is where this one's done over in here we need two iron ingots which we should have we also need eight corrosive powder which we've got the lithic which we've got and then we just need the bioluminescent which mostly for us just requires inventory space nice and if we have everything correct here we should just be able to make the capo ingot assuming that we have a single nutrient bar in our backpack to give to the uh to the forge and by a single i mean i guess a couple of these maybe it takes more than one let's do just these here perfect nice all right chat we have both ingots and so now what i'm going to do real quick is just make a bunch more of the chromatic compound throw all that chromatic compound into our beacon to get a bunch more refined radiance and then we'll use that refined radiance to duplicate our pirut and kepu ingots until we have 15 of each and then we'll look at making the sapphire dust all right so a bunch more chromatic compound crafting later and a bunch more beacon dropping later we now have 48 refined radiance and so we should just be able to craft this a couple of times over until we have 15 of each ingot and then it's just a case of setting up the right kind don't want to go too far on this i think that's perfect though uh, that's 15 i don't think we're gonna need more of these but i'll do 16 just in case because i do want to keep at least one of each of these just on the off chance that we need more in the future let's do this let's do this and this and this and this and this and this perfect okay so once we have 16 of each we can put the uh, the other refined radiance back in there but later and now i kind of think we can just repurpose this line of machines that we have here so we need two deployers those are going to be this one and this one the order does matter here so it needs to be the kepu ingots here and the uh, pink ones here and then other than that we just need three presses we already have one press down we need two more mechanical presses these guys right here and we do not of course have what it takes to make it however they are unseeable and so you know what i was going to make another one to emc it but I, we can just go ahead and uh, take this one and uh, do a quick one of these like this and type in mechanical press we can take two more of these one and two fantastic let's put one of them back down here and then let's swap out you and you for you and you and i think at that point we're basically good to go we just need to take our sapphire essence and run it through here 
15 times. So it's going to go somewhat slowly. We can take this back away now, and we could maybe look at speeding things up as well, but that's one. This will be two. We just need to do this 15 times. And there we go, 15 rounds later. I guess I made one too many. Actually, I know I made one too many of each ingot. That was intentional. And so we are good to go. We have our sapphire dust. Now, the next quest is actually super simple. We need a multi server press, which we do not have. However, making a multi server press is really not too difficult. We do need another machine frame. That's fine. We can EMC that machine frame because we taught our tablet how to make them before. I need to stop pulling all the items into my inventory, though. I need to click that little X on the uh, the crafting remote when I fail a craft. We do need to get uh, some Constantan gears. We also need a flux coil, which I did EMC, but it's also kind of just faster to make it. Constantan, I do believe we have. Whether or not we have enough to make the gears is unknown. We do have exactly enough to make two gears, but I'm going to EMC that just so we can make more in the future. And then I assume that the gear recipe is something like this. It totally is. Nice. And that should be everything for the multi server press. Nice. So uh, Sapphire just doesn't have an EMC chat, unfortunately, but uh, the Sapphire itself does have an EMC value. Now to make it, we do need this uh, gem gold cast. And so we need one ingot's worth of gold and we need to pull that over one gem. I'm gonna use a, an emerald, any gem would work, but we'll go for emerald over here. Let's do this, let's do this. Now the problem that we're gonna run into is that unfortunately the way the quest book is laid out here, we need to make a blaze cake in order to unlock the quests, which is very unfortunate. And so I do think that despite the fact that we now don't need the blaze cake, we are still gonna have to make one if we want to be able to complete the quests here, which I think is definitely something we want to be able to do. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the gem gold cast in here. And if we wanted to, we could put the sapphire dust in and get our first sapphire. But I'm gonna hold off on doing that until we have a blaze cake because otherwise we'd have to make another sapphire dust, which means we'd have to get another 15 of these ingots and we'd have to get another one of the sapphire essence, which is just more ruby essence. It's a pain in the backside, not worth doing. And so I think we're pretty close to making a lot of this stuff, but what we'll do next time is we'll come back, we'll make ourselves a blaze cake real quick. We'll put that away for later. We'll make the sapphire. We'll teach our transmutation table the sapphires so we can make infinite of those. We'll upgrade our blood altar to tier five by getting some of these hell forged blocks. And we'll also look at getting into power as well so we can get nitro crystals for the watch of flowing time. And then at that point, of course, we can move on into the FTB industrial contraptions and draconic evolution section of the quest book before finally heading towards the end. But of course, those are problems for future Isaac. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode of Project Sacrifice. There.